Welcome to Nature's House Cats. My name is Cassidy, and this is a podcast where we talk about feral cats, their relation to humans, and what we can do to help our favorite feline companions. We will be focusing on a colony of feral cats in the woods of Portland, Oregon, with our guest and my brother, Denny. A small background, Denny has been trapping and releasing cats and rehoming kittens, all while giving veterinary care to his local colony for over eight years. He has ample experience with all cat personalities and is here to share stories that help us better understand the challenges they face. So Denny, do you remember your first experience with feral cats? If so, what was that like? Well, I was just telling you earlier, um, I had uh, that experience in 2015 or 2016 with Mr. Sideways, which was He's actually an abandoned stray cat, but he was our first feral cat experience. We found him outside with an injury, and it turned out he was an abuse victim, and uh, we got him fixed up, and um, eventually we got him neutered and his shots and a checkup done through the Feral Cat Coalition in Portland, Oregon. Wow, that's amazing. So we do have some of our research for this podcast pulled from the Feral Cat Coalition's So two main things that are currently against feral cats is that their populations easily grow out of control and encroach on other wildlife populations, and that they can carry and transmit disease. According to an article by felineresearch.org called Are Stray Cats or Feral Cats Dangerous to Humans and Public Health, only one person has contracted rabies from a feral cat in the last 45 years. Even with that in mind, people still hold fear that the feces of cats can transmit a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii, which is said to have detrimental effects to mental health. With proper hygiene when handling cats, the risk is extremely low of contraction, and this parasite can come from any warm-blooded animal. In your experience, have you faced any negative opinions from friends, coworkers, or neighbors since being a caretaker for the cats? Or has anyone mentioned a concern for their their health or their mental health? I um, haven't had an overwhelming level of support from everyone. I've talked to almost everyone. There's been a couple people that have overheard conversations in like Winco. And there was one man in particular who was very upset that I was helping further the population of feral cats because he was very worried about the birds. And he was kind of uh, unreasonable, though. He wouldn't listen to anything I had to say. <clears throat> But um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, overwhelming support. Everybody loves the the fact that I do the feral cat work and um, everybody seems to think that it, it's, it does help with the population control quite a bit in a lot of ways too. Awesome. So if, if you could explain what caring for a feral kitten is like versus regular kitten, what are some of the differences you might face as a, as a new cat owner? When you get a feral kitten, depending on how many weeks old it is, you're going to have a number of challenges, such as if it was separated from its mother too early, you're going to have it have to give it kitten milk replacer. Um, you're always looking for signs of disease or infection. It could be an injury or anything. They're outside. They get injured a lot. Um, eyes de- tend to get goopy, and that's a common one. And then also respiratory infections. You got to look out for all of that. Thankfully, it's all pretty treatable with just standard veterinary care, you just bring them in and they give them a shot of convenia or something like that. And it works really well for them. Um, the other things you'll notice if a cat hit, had a problem getting food or um, drinking milk from its mother, it will growl when it eats. And that's totally normal. They're usually not hostile. It's just kind of a, a way that they say, this is my food and they need it. And also it's really good if you have a seriously malnourished feral kitten to give it as high calorie food as possible. They make really good stuff for that. That's awesome. Okay, so there has been a lot of news about feral cat populations growing out of control and specifically affecting birds in populations such as Hawaii. Uh, Vice made a video on YouTube called Hawaii's Feral Cat War that kind of went viral. It portrayed feral cats very differently from how we see house cats that we know and love. Feral cats are being hunted to control populations, but other research argues that the hunting and search efforts for feral cats does even more damage to nature and local wildlife than other methods such as TNR, also known as trap, neuter, return. 
This paper from the organization Feline Research on wildlife impacts of outdoor cats called to question the necessity of killing wild cats when there are more sustainable and ethical options already in practice that are proven to be better. So do you feel like hunting and killing feral cats as a method to lower populations in order to protect other species has any positive effects? I really don't think it has any positive effects whatsoever. Not only are you killing cats, if you have that on your conscience and they're very intelligent, smart and lovable animals, uh, the public generally frowns upon any sort of thing like that because everybody loves cats. There's a, there's a, there's a very common thread in the uh, internet community. You don't mess with cats. That's just something you don't do. But um, the, the thing is, is if you do TNR correctly and you get the shots done and you get um, as many of the female cats and I, I mean, it's good to get the male ones too, but really if you just get one of the, um, the female cats spayed, they will, it really cuts down on the population. Um, you remove the kittens and you get them spayed too and put them into adoption programs. And that really does help preserve the, the songbird population. Every, everything kind of is more harmonious that way. Generally, when you're working with nature, you want to be as light touch as possible because, you know, we're humans. We already messed a lot of stuff up. <laughs> Absolutely. So do you have any other elaboration on the process of TNR and how this might be healthier for both local cats and surrounding communities? Anything we haven't touched on yet? Well, I, the process of, of trapping the cat is, is worth noting. It's um, when you identify a feral cat colony, um, you want to, you're going to want to gain their trust with food. Food is always the, the best motivator. And then what you do is you have these feral cat traps that are rectangular and they just, they're a walk-in trap. They walk in and the door shuts behind them. But you put, um, you open those and you, there's a locking mechanism that leaves them open and you put the food in the back. And then when they go in, they eat it. Several days go by, they're eating the food in the trap. Then one day you disable the safeguard and they walk in and they're trapped. And then you take them the same day to the Feral Cat Coalition or to another TNR facility. Um, and then you'll get them back same day, but they need to stay overnight on the porch so that they can, all the anesthetics can wear off since they're going to be pretty loopy coming out of surgery, no matter what kind of surgery it is. But yeah, once they're out, um, they, they get a medical checkup there. They also get shots for, you know, FC, FVRCP, rabies, feline leukemia, the, the main ones. And that's the whole process. Um, you can also, if there's kittens, you can also foster those or rehome them uh, with your friends or take them to the Humane Society. That also works. Awesome. So have you experienced any difficulties receiving veterinary care for the cats that are particularly unhealthy? Like, what are the resources like when you, you find a cat and you need to bring them in? So we actually have several benefactors that have paid for some more of the more expensive things we've had to deal with. We have a lady named Ruth who's an absolute angel, and she has paid for many respiratory infections to be cured. But the good news is when you're a kitten, if you have... Um, you know, some injuries or things like that, they're growing, they're going to heal quickly. So they, um, there's not, there's a lot of things that you can do that aren't too expensive. I mean, if you have a severely malnourished flea bitten cat, it's going to take, you know, several hundred dollars to, to get them rehabilitated, but it's always worth it. They, they, it's generally has a very high success rate when they're kittens. Yeah, definitely. That youth factor helps yep. out a lot. <laughs> So as a fellow cat lover and enthusiast, I want to know more about what it is like to be a feral cat. Through my research, I've learned that it is very difficult to turn a feral adult cat into a house cat, but feral kittens are young enough to succumb to the life that is napping all day and having meals on a silver platter. You know, regular cat things. So what mm -hmm. is the best way to calm a feral cat if they seem agitated or scared? make yourself as small as possible. You're gonna want to, the thing that feral cats all hate is tall people and things that are tall and things that move fast. So when you get down low and you use a calm, low, soft voice and you're just, you're very gentle. Um, the, uh, the next thing you need is something very smelly, like a food that they like, like tuna or something along those lines. Usually if you, um, if you have all of those things in combination, you can gain the trust of most cats. Some cats 
are that are you know older that we caught later they have a really hard time coming around and um, sometimes the best thing to do is to give them a little hiding spot where they can sit if they get freaked out they can go in there and kind of calm down in their little blanket cave and then you know you can try to approach them and be gentle and slow and just you know just this what's the word graceful as possible with them right right easily they're easily startled so do uh, feral cats in the same given area start to look alike if their population stays tight knit? Absolutely. I have three cats that are from the same colony. You know them, Kimchi. It's it's Kimchi, Tombo, and Ollie, and they are all essentially the same cat in different sizes. <laughs> Absolutely, so, yeah. A lot They're... of the cat genetics will go. Uh, if you have gray tabby, all the cats look like gray tabby. Right, but, right. Uh, how it goes <laughs> <laughs> that's so interesting that they just kind of all you know come out the same the same flavor as they say interestingly yeah. enough we have tofu um who has a very mixed up genetic profile and she has managed to get every kind of coat marking you can get you she has a stripe she has spots she has um the uh there's a gene that makes their fur uh change color due to the to like a related to the temperature that they're in. And that's why Siamese cats sort of turn brown and stuff. It's the same one, but she has both types of fur. It's, she's very interesting. So cats are loved throughout the world and are typically the second favorite choice for house pets, number one, in my opinion. Some people have better experience with the CDS, cat distribution system. This mm -hmm. is the mythical concept that explains how kittens and cats just randomly appear in our lives. I want to know what other countries do to accommodate wild cats and what we should do if we ever encounter them as well. So countries like Turkey and Japan seem much more inclined to have populations of outdoor cats roaming around. Why do you think that is? In Turkey, the culture is that cats are the clean animal and that they are helpful and beneficial. And in Japan, cats are beloved because they're little, you know, they're little Nikos. They, they're just... That's what they call them there, and they are they're adorable. Uh, they've got islands of cats in Japan that are really cool to go visit. I would love it would be a, you know dream to visit one. But I also love the pictures of the mosques in Turkey that have all the cats all over the steps and everything. It, it makes me happy to see it. I'm I'm glad that they are, are so welcoming to cats. Yeah, me too. I know I remember seeing a, a news article at one point that the place where Julius Caesar was killed in Rome, there's a lot of ruins there and, and fallen columns and things like that. And it's a cat sanctuary. So the cats just roam all over this extremely historical landmark. Wow. That's and awesome. it, yeah, it just, it just creates the whole scene when you're traveling there. It's just a home for cats, but it's also so historical. If someone were to encounter a feral cat or kitten, what are the first things you would advise them to do? If you are trying to make friends with the cat, um, you would definitely, uh, the food is always the best route. And you just what I said earlier, try to be graceful and slow. And they're not going to want, you, their first attempt to make friends with them is going to fail. All you can really do is give them some food. But the next day you come out with the food and they're like, hey, you you seem cool. You have food every day. And then slowly you can gain their trust. If you're just trying to see if the cat's okay, um, you you can just walk and see, watch how they walk and walk how it's, if they're healthy, they'll be able to run very fast, jump six foot fence and all sorts of things like that. The other thing I would look out for is if they have the tipped ear. Uh, most cats that have already been through the program, they take part of the ear, just the edge of it, and make it flat on the top. And that's the um, that's actually the Feral Cat Coalition's logo is, is a silhouette of a cat with a tipped ear. But the ear tip means that they've already been taken care of. They're just living their lives. Uh, if they're, you know, nice enough, you can make friends with them. Sometimes they're, you know, kind of aloof. And every now and then we have cats that we can pick up that are completely feral. So, yeah, that's great. So lastly, is there a particular way that you're able to tell a feral cat from a stray or neighborhood cat? Do you know what any of the differences you should look out for? Yeah, there's quite a few. Um, a, a neighborhood cat is going to be well fed. They might even be a little pudgy because there's also multi-family cats that go. They basically have three homes and they get three breakfasts, and they're just you know 
live in the dream basically. And then you've got stray cats that are cared for and they always will look healthy, but feral cats, you're going to see unkempt fur, skinnier cats that are much faster. They, um, feral cats don't, they're, they're weight trimmed. So they fly, they, uh, and a feral cat in good health can run up to 35 miles an hour. That is something everybody should know. They can absolutely smoke you if you try to uh, catch one on foot. Um, they're even on a bicycle. I mean, <laughs> cat, cats will just leave you behind. And um, yeah, uh, the you'll see dirtier. You'll uh, eye goop is another good example. They a lot of them have feline herpes, and they'll have a little bit of eye goop, and that's really the only major symptom of that. But uh, they'll there's really you know a lot of cats live with it. But uh, that's another sign of it. Uh, chewed up ears from fighting your ticks out of the ears you know beat pieces out there's a cat we have named carlos norris who's been in about a thousand fights this year alone and he's just got chewed up ears and but he's he really is a good boy so you know wow so thank you for answering all those questions my hope for the listener is to demystify the recent news that has come out about feral cats although they are part of a food chain that could endanger certain bird species we must remain ethical and explore the antics of these animals to better understand them and to care for them. With more community involvement and awareness of how to care for colonies, we can reduce birth rates by spaying and neutering, and we can find forever homes for kittens. Thank you for listening to this chat about nature's house cat, and thank you, Denny, for providing your experience in this field. Thank you for having me, Cassidy. It was a blast.